Hi and welcome to this short tutorial on very long description of JK flip flop. Um, in the previous video, I actually did it the same thing for D flip flop. Uh, let's now do it for JK flip flop. Okay, so here's a schematic. Here's a circuit diagram for JK. It's basically a sort of like a SNR, um, where SNR are replaced by J and K, and then we have one extra input that you see in blue. So Q uh, bar is connected to this input of the NAND gate and then Q is connected to this input of this NAND gate. Uh, we covered uh, this in lecture number 17 so I'm not gonna go into details um, so but I'll just uh, drop a link in the description so you can go uh, and uh, get to know more about it. <clears throat> so here is the truth table and this is what we need. Uh, when clock is zero we know in case of the any flip-flop uh, regardless of the input your Q and Q bar are basically uh, your previous states okay here and uh, when the clock is high when J and K both are set to zero uh, it again um, X as a memory uh, when J is zero and K is one uh, this is when Q is zero and Q bar is one um, and also when J is 1, K is 0, Q is 1, and Q bar is 0. And then one unique property of JK is that logic race condition where the output actually toggle switches between the previous state 0 and 1, 1 and 0, when JK and both are high, uh, when the clock is high. So in other words, you know, this is a truth table for JK. We're going to follow this JK truth table and come up with a code for JK flip-flop. Uh, very long description. So remember when both JK and high, the next state is basically the complement of the previous state. Uh, let's now get going on the very long description. I've already created, uh, opened a new project, uh, selected my FPGA target. I'm using basis 3, so it's got uh, CPG236. Uh, Artix family. I'm going to design uh, add a new source file um, So I click here uh, Click next uh, I'm gonna create a new one. So I'll say JK Up <clears throat> make sure you don't have any spaces um, Here you this is the port uh, identifier so I'm gonna use uh, J and K as my input <clears throat> So um, use the reset button here. Uh, I'm also gonna use the clock as my input, and then I have my Q and Q bar as outputs. <clears throat> so let's choose them as outputs. So if you do a schematic, actually, you can see your inputs and outputs. So your inputs are J, K, clear. I don't have a reset here, but I'm gonna add a reset. So there's the fourth input, and then the outputs are Q and Q bar. That's all I have over here. Uh, let's click uh, OK, uh, and it should open a source file for me. I can double click here. Uh, if you wish, you can actually put an identifier, uh, put a data type there as well. Uh, if you wish, not necessary. Um, Hmm. So all these will be inputs will be wire uh, and then out will be register. Hmm. Okay, uh, and here's my topology ready. Uh, now I'm going to start off by saying always at the edge clock uh, begin. If reset now when the reset button is pressed uh, I want my Q E0 and Q bar to be 1 so that part is done and I say in else and um, now we're gonna do a case statement here uh, for J and K inputs. So in the curly braces, <coughs> excuse me, J, K, K, 
in. Here uh, we will actually do uh, these four cases right here. Okay. Uh, when J and K both are zero, uh, when zero, one, one, zero, and one. Okay. So uh, two, zero, zero, and uh, Q equals to Q, uh, and Q bar is equals to bar. Um, semicolon and I say end and I'll just copy paste it three more times hmm uh, here j0 k1 here j1 k0 and here j and k both are one so remember here your j a equals to zero uh, and then here we had j both set to high uh, and similarly we have j equals to one here and k now <clears throat> when q j is zero here j equals to zero and k equals to one when j is zero k equals to one q is q needs to be zero q bar needs to be one q needs to be zero and Q bar needs to be one. Okay. When J is one, K is zero. When J is one, K is zero. Q needs to be one. Q bar needs to be zero. Q bar needs to be zero. Uh, and similarly, when J and K both are one, uh, we know that next state is basically the complement of the previous state so I'm just gonna say <clears throat> complement of the previous state the Q bar is also the complement of the previous state um, I got all my ends I had uh, uh, now I'm gonna say n case uh, and then I'll say n another end okay, one for this page and one for this these on uh, the clock in the case statement alrighty looks like my code is ready for JK for file was pretty simple I'll just go through it again one more time I got my um, uh, inputs uh, and outputs right here JK reset clock uh, and I declared them as a uh, wire and then I got QQ bar as my outputs Remember, we are basically following this, um, this schematic right here, okay? We got yeah, inputs on the left, we got outputs on the right, I just added a reset. Um, and then here, basically using the case statement, we're defining our J and 0 and what should happen to our outputs, okay? I'm going to save it, uh, and I'm going to, looks like I got a couple of errors. Uh, let's see what it is. Alright, so it looks like one of the error is... Uh, line number 32 and looks like I misspelled so it needs to be positive H um, so that one is done and the another error is I need to say begin here because I'm ending this over here so I need a begin over here um, so make sure I got one two three begins so I should have three ends one two and three okay looks like all set uh, click save um, I'm gonna click on this file and I'm gonna run synthesis on it it should go through <clears throat> uh, just when you click it it takes few seconds so you gotta be a little patient yay so it took almost um, 45 50 seconds and we got it uh, it has been synthesized successfully I'm not gonna worry about running implementation because I'm done, not gonna be doing it on the board I'm just gonna do the simulation using Vivado. Uh, so, all right, let's create a test bench file. Right click here, um, click add sources, uh, choose create simulation sources, click next, um, create a file, uh, name it, I'll say JK underscore test bench TB, click OK, finish it, 
and I'll just skip this step and just click OK. <clears throat> uh, yes. Okay, all right, and I should see my test bench file here. Now let's work on the test bench file. So let's start a coding for that. Ready. I'm going to register, uh, declare all my inputs as registers, uh, like we have done in the class. So I got clock, I got reset, I have J and K my inputs. Okay, and my outputs, I'm gonna declare them as wire Q, Q R. Why are we doing that? And I have explained that in my other videos as well. Well, we want clock reset and J K those inputs to be constant for a certain amount of time so they need to be stored so we are declaring the register and q and q bar will change as clock reset j and k change so we are actually declaring them as wire at this point we are going to instantiate uh, the jk flip-flop uh, that we just created <coughs> so make sure it change uh, it actually uh, matches the name over here jk underscore flip flop jk underscore flip flop uh, use identifier name i'll just say you not and you set your <clears throat> inputs clock player jk inputs q and q bar uh, now we're going to work on our stimulus define the values for our inputs uh, and we'll begin with um, this should not be clear, it should be reset. Let's say J equals to zero. Uh, K equals to zero as well. Hmm. Reset equals one and clock is set to one. And I want to give it 10 nanoseconds delay. I should have a hash sign here. Reset equals to zero. Uh, J equals to say one. Uh, K equals to zero. <clears throat> and then I want to give a hundred nanosecond delay or ten nanosecond delay would work as well. It, it's up to you, whatever you want to give. Uh, reset uh, equals to zero. Um, J is, I'm gonna set, set it zero now uh, and then k equals to one and let's give another 100 nanosecond delay <clears throat> uh, now this time set equals to zero we're gonna try different combinations and see uh, we'll do, then verify the truth table looking at the simulation <clears throat> one setting JK both high here and another 100 nanosecond delay <clears throat> uh, this time reset equals to zero again uh, remember when reset is zero that is when it will work uh, conventionally but when reset is high that means the way we have set the code when reset is high Q gets zero and Q bar gets one. Okay. Let's finish our test bench here. J equals to <clears throat> zero. Again, K equals to just randomly picking some um, combinations. The last one. Here. here J equals to one. I'll say end here. Uh, I would like for my clock to toggle every 25 nanoseconds. <clears throat> okay. uh, and then I say end module, which is right there. Looks like my code is complete. I'm going to save it. <clears throat> uh, and uh, notice when I saved it. Uh, you see the file, the source file for 
the JK flip-flop that we created earlier is now instantiated. So JK test bench is a top module now. Uh, click on that top uh, test bench file. Uh, click run simulation. Use run behavioral simulation. Uh, yes, discard. <clears throat> You might not have those pop-up windows because I was earlier working on a project, so that's why I had those. Uh, it may take a few seconds, so just be patient. Um, yay, you got it to work. Uh, so looks like I'm just gonna squeeze these columns a little so we can see our waveform. Uh, yeah, uh, and let's just zoom in a little. All right, um, so this is our clock. Uh, let's make it red. Let's our reset. Uh, make it blue. Um, this is our, our inputs J and K. Uh, let's change the color. Let's say gold and uh, gold also. Okay, all right. So uh, for a tiny amount of time, Let's zoom in a little more. <clears throat> uh, we had our reset high. Okay. Uh, so the way we had the logic set, when reset uh, is going to be high, the Q is going to be 0 and Q bar is going to be 1. Q is going to be 0 and Q bar is going to be 1, which is the case. Okay. Let's move down here. When clock is high and reset is 0, J is 1. K is 0. Okay, let's look at the two table. J is 1, K is 0, clock is high, Q is supposed to be 1, Q bar is supposed to be 0. Q is 1 and Q bar is 0. Okay, uh, I changed the variable so, but the QB is Q bar and Q is the Q out the next day. Uh, similarly, if you actually look at where J and K both are high, which is the case over here j is high k is high uh, both are high the output is zero q zero q bar is one when the when the clock is high for the next time it actually switches goes from zero to one and q bar goes from one to zero uh, and if i look at over here uh, for the next clock pulse it should swap again Q should become 0, Q bar should become 1. If I choose this time period right here, you notice when JK were high, because when JK are both high, the previous the next state is the complement of the previous state, and that's what we saw over here. The JK <clears throat> went uh, were uh, kept high and Q and Q bar were then uh, you know they swapped. Okay. Uh, similarly, one more combination maybe over here at this point right here. Uh, when clock is high, J is 0 and K is 1. Um, when clock is high, J is 0, K is 1. Q is supposed to be 0. Okay. <clears throat> Q is supposed to be 0 and it is. And Q bar is supposed to be 1. Okay. So that's that's it guys uh, from this presentation um, you've been able to implement JK flip-flop and I were able to do the simulation um, I hope you enjoyed the video try yourself if you have any question uh, leave a comment there okay thank you for watching bye